we are introduced to Bart, a harsh loan shark. His method of getting money from those who owe him is not only unique but also extremely harsh. Bart has raised a man named Danny like a dog for his entire life. From when Danny was young, he was kept in a cage, given dog food to eat, and taught only how to follow orders. Danny's thinking is similar to that of a young child because he doesn't know how to talk or behave unless he was instructed to. Danny always wears a special dog collar. With the collar on, he's safe to be around. But the moment the collar is removed, he becomes like a fierce, untamed dog, attacking anyone causing trouble for Bart. Bart treats Danny with no kindness, often hitting and mocking him. Yet, Danny, not knowing any different, views this harsh treatment as a form of care. One evening, after a day of assaulting people for cash, Bart takes Danny back to their place. A person sees Danny's forehead is bleeding and offers him a bandage. However, Danny, not understanding its purpose, simply returns to his cage and starts hitting a punching bag. He has a book for first graders that he reads for fun. He learns some new words and is very eager to learn more. The next day, they go back to their usual activities of intimidating those who owe money. One of their targets is a rich businessman who has a large debt to Bart. This businessman is different from their usual targets because he knows about the trick with Danny's collar. To stop Bart from using Danny, they quickly grab Bart before he can remove Danny's collar. While Bart is being beaten, Danny watches, confused and unsure of what to do. Eventually, Bart manages to remove Danny's collar. This unleashes the violent side of Danny, known as the Beast, and he quickly defeats the attackers. A man named Wyatt, who organizes illegal fights, notices Danny's exceptional fighting abilities. Seeing Danny, Wyatt thinks he can make a lot of money with him. After the businessman is severely beaten, Bart collects his money and leaves. Despite Danny saving him, Bart is angry that Danny didn't intervene sooner. He insults Danny, calling him worthless, without acknowledging that he himself is the cause of Danny's condition. For their last errand of the day, they visit an antique warehouse. To avoid the previous situation, Bart tells Danny to stay outside and watch for an alarm. If the alarm turns red, Danny is to go inside and assist Bart and his men. While waiting, Danny notices a piano in a corner. He recognizes it from his book and is intrigued. As he tentatively plays a few keys, a blind pianist enters the room. His name is Sam, and he's there to tune the piano. Seeing Danny's interest in the piano, Sam guides him. This is completely new for Danny. He's never experienced kindness like this. During their time together, Danny remains silent, but Sam doesn't mind. To help Danny concentrate, he suggests listening to the clocks ticking, which reminds Danny of the alarm he was supposed to watch for his master. Noticing the alarm light is on, Danny quickly goes inside and finds Bart and his crew beaten on the floor, having barely won their fight but injured. Back at their base, they angrily blame Danny, hurling insults and pushing him back into his cage. Then, Wyatt approaches Bart with a proposal. He wants Danny to enter an underground fight to the death, promising significant earnings if Danny wins. Bart immediately agrees, seeing the potential for profit. The next day, Danny is taken to the fight, facing a champion unbeaten for three years, with everyone betting against Danny. However, Danny quickly defeats his opponent with three powerful punches to the neck, ending the fight in under a minute. Wyatt is thrilled, recognizing Danny's extraordinary talent. Wyatt gives Bart his part of the winnings, telling him more will come. Returning to their base, Bart is in high spirits and encourages Danny to wish for anything. Danny mentions a piano in a hesitant way, but Bart dismisses the idea, not seeing how a piano could benefit someone he views merely as a tool. Then, their journey takes a dramatic turn when their car is struck by a truck. The wealthy businessman they had previously attacked has organized a retaliation against Bart. His men shoot at the car, fatally wounding Bart while Danny survives with a less fatal injury. With no one else to turn to, Danny heads to the only place he can think of, the antique warehouse. There, Sam, the blind piano tuner, recognizes Danny by the sound of his footsteps. Before Danny can seek help, he loses consciousness. When he regains awareness, he finds himself on the softest surface he's ever experienced. It takes a moment for him to realize he's in an unfamiliar room. Sam has taken Danny into his home, caring for him during his two-day unconsciousness. Danny, not used to kindness, feels out of place in this new, gentle environment. Sam's stepdaughter, Victoria, comes home and discovers a frightened Danny hiding under the bed. Understanding there's something unique about him, she brings a keyboard to him, knowing his interest in the piano. As the evening progresses, the family patiently waits for Danny to come to dinner, offering him a place among them.
He walks out, holding the keyboard close. Since he's never eaten with others, he starts eating quickly and messily as he usually does. Victoria shows him how to eat neatly, which makes the family laugh and gives Danny a feeling he's unfamiliar with. Sam later attempts to remove Danny's collar, but Danny is scared and refuses. Sam respects his wish and doesn't insist. The next day, Sam and Danny drop Victoria at her college. When she gives Danny a kiss on the cheek, it leaves him feeling excited and happy, something he'd only read about. Sam sees Danny's reaction and smiles, recognizing Danny's lack of experience with affection and his troubled past. To help Danny become more comfortable around others, Sam takes him to a grocery store to practice interacting with people. Despite being nervous, Danny is amazed by how Sam communicates with others. That evening, he is asked to bring Victoria home from college. He nervously meets her, and the two go out for ice cream. Later, when Victoria can't sleep, she teaches Danny some piano basics. Sam overhears the conversation from his bedroom and smiles, glad that Danny is finally starting to connect with the others. Quickly, Danny becomes a key part of their family. During a shopping trip, when a fight breaks out among some troublemakers, Sam and others are frightened, but Danny remains focused on selecting vegetables, undisturbed by the chaos. Sam later asks him about his calm demeanor, to which Danny responds that since he wasn't the target of the aggression, he saw no reason to get involved. This prompts Sam to delve into Danny's background, leading to a deeper understanding and empathy for what Danny had been through, recognizing how his innocence was exploited to turn him into a fighter. In the following weeks, the sense of family and belonging grows stronger. Danny reaches a point of trust where he lets Victoria remove his collar, showing he feels safe without it. Then, during a repair job on a piano, Sam shares that he and Victoria plan to move back to New York after her graduation. Danny's initial dismay at the thought of being left behind is quickly soothed when Sam includes him in their plans, affirming his place in their family. Feeling a sense of contribution and belonging, Danny decides to use some money he earned to buy gifts for the family. However, his plans take an unexpected turn when he encounters a former associate of Bart's, who informs him that Bart is still alive and searching for him, hoping to reclaim his valuable asset. Curious and seeking closure about his origins, Danny decides to confront Bart. During their meeting, he asks about his parents, only to learn that Bart had found him abandoned and never sought to find his family, underscoring the lack of concern Bart had for him beyond his value as a tool for earning money. After that, Danny is forced into another deathmatch by his boss. Initially, Bart attempts to use the collar trick to control Danny, but it no longer works. Danny refuses to fight, even when pushed into the battle ring with a dangerous opponent. Despite being brutally beaten by multiple fighters who are sent into the ring to make the match more interesting, Danny remains passive and does not retaliate. However, after a man steps on his hand, something triggers a change in Danny's mind, and he reverts to his former self. He quickly defeats all of his opponents. Afterwards, a beaten Danny is thrown back into his cage. Meanwhile, Victoria and Sam are concerned about Danny's whereabouts but have no idea where to search for him. When left alone, Danny escapes from the cage and discovers a collection of pictures on Bart's workstation. He recognizes himself in a photo where he is sitting with his mother in front of a piano. Confronting Bart, Danny demands information about his mother. Bart reveals that she was a sex worker who often brought young Danny to work, disregarding appropriate boundaries. Bart, however, fell in love with her. When she died from an illness, he took Danny in and made him part of his family. The next day, while driving to work, Danny hears the word family, which triggers memories of Sam and Victoria. He swerves the car, causing a crash, and uses the opportunity to escape. Danny returns to his true family, who are overjoyed to see him. Upon learning about his mother's background, they empathize with his situation. Victoria notices a detail in the photograph and Sam recognizes it as an auditorium he has visited before. Seeking more information about Danny's mother, they visit the auditorium. The staff members recognize her but reveal that she disappeared with her son one day and never returned. Victoria discovers a musical note in the picture's background and uses it to play the piano. The melody is the same one Danny's mother used to play when he was a child. This triggers the memories he had suppressed over the years. A flashback reveals that his mother was a struggling musician who borrowed money from Bart in exchange for sexual favors. She always kept Danny away from her work until Bart discovered his existence. When she refused to let Bart see the child, she was killed and Danny was abducted. After regaining his memories, Danny realizes the extent of Bart's danger. He urges Sam and Victoria to pack their belongings and leave the city immediately. However, before they can depart, Bart arrives at Sam's apartment building with a large group of his men. 
Danny hides Sam and Victoria in their closet to ensure their safety before running out to distract the thugs. Danny faces off against a skilled attacker named The Stranger, hired by Bart, who possesses a skill level similar to his own. They engage in an intense battle, which concludes when The Stranger falls out of the window, despite Danny's efforts to save him. Bart manages to track down the apartment where Danny used to live. He threatens to kill Sam and Victoria if Danny doesn't surrender. To protect his loved ones, Danny reluctantly gives himself up. However, when he gets close enough to Bart, Danny attacks him and begins to beat him furiously. Sam and Victoria emerge from the closet to intervene, knowing that Danny is not a killer at heart. As the situation calms down, the three embrace each other. In the final scene, Danny and Sam attend a piano recital where Victoria is performing. She dedicates the piece to a special person and plays the same song that Danny's mother played years ago. As Danny watches Victoria's performance, he is filled with awe and sheds a tear of happiness. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.